name is Tim Michaels. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. These short videos have been created for our colleagues in our community as a way to help us with our body, minds, and souls as we're going through so many different changes in our world. These are brought to you by Trinity Health of New England in partnership with the Centers for Integrative Medicine and Health. Each week we have a new topic. This week I'm really excited because I also have a new guest with me, Sister Dolores Lair. So before I let Sister Dolores introduce herself, a couple of things I want to level set with everybody. Uh, Sister Dolores is a member of the St. Sisters of St. Joseph of Chambray, and of the five hospitals in New England, two of them, St. Mary's and St. Francis, Hartford and Waterbury, were established. They are ingrained in our communities because of the Sisters of St. Joseph. So we have another one that's developed by the Sisters of Providence. We have two that are developed by families. But we're very lucky that we still have the presence of some of the sisters from the Sisters of St. Joseph to help shepherd us. So welcome, Sister Dolores. Thank you, Tim. I'm trying to be careful how much I embarrass you in the first introduction of your service <laughs> to us. I haven't brought up the Pope Award yet. That could come up later. But later. What, I, mm -hmm. later. what I do want to talk about with you this week is, is started simply uh, when I drove by your convent in West Hartford on the corner of Prospect and um, uh, New Park Road, mm -hmm. and the, there was a visual change. And what I've been noticing during the last year and a half with my stress level is often there's a visual cue that will put me into a tailspin well before I hear facts or data. Sometimes mm -hmm. walking the hallway, the hallways being too empty start to get me on edge. Mm -hmm. They make me think we're back into another surge. Traffic missing starts to get, excite me but also too much traffic stresses me out. Mm. But on this particular day when I drove by the convent on Park Road, I literally thought I was lost. Got very confused because I couldn't figure out how the sisters had built a new chapel in such a short period of time. And I was on the phone with you one day and I said, I don't know what's happened, but I couldn't figure out where I was. And you quietly said to me, the trees are missing. Mm. And all of a sudden it made so much sense. And that's when I invited you to sit down with me. You're an executive leader at St. Mary's. You've been the president of the Sisters of St. Joseph. Mm -hmm. There's many community roles. But I'm just so curious as an individual, on top of all the other stuff you've dealt with the last year and a half, how are you managing the change around that landmark that has stood in front of the community for almost 140 years? Mm -hmm. That's such a great question, Tim. When you spoke with me last week about coming around the corner and seeing the chapel, and my first comment was the trees were gone. The trees had been there for years and years and years. When the chapel was built in 1964, the trees were there. So the public has always seen the trees on the corner. And I myself, the first time I drove around the corner after the trees were gone, I pulled over and just looked wow. because the trees were gone. And I had never, personally, I had never seen the chapel so exposed as it was that day I pulled my car over and I actually took a picture. But as you and I engaged in conversation last week, one of the things I've been reflecting on since then is that while the trees are gone, the commitment that I made personally in that chapel, because that's where I received a habit, which obviously I don't wear anymore, where I made first vows and where I made my final profession. So my commitment as a sister of St. Joseph still stands, even though the trees are gone and the chapel is no longer a chapel for the sisters. And actually the process for selling the property and for where it is today began when I was the leader of the congregation. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because I, I, I think like many people just using this property as an example, assumed it's another casualty of COVID. And the truth mm -hmm. is it's not. No. That mm -hmm. one of the things I know from our stress management research has been around kind of the um, tandem grieving or anticipatory stress that we create because everything around us is happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the removal of the trees is COVID related, the closing of the store is COVID, but it's all touching um, this vulnerable place. You use the word exposed. 
Mm. The chapel's never been so exposed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I do think the human spirit is, is feeling that exposure. What mm -hmm. we keep referring to is I want to be like I was before or go back to normal or new normal. Talks to our own, I know it sounds maybe silly to some viewers, but it feels like our personal trees have been removed. Mm -hmm. And we're feeling the loss of the trees. Um, but the view of the chapel is spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, especially at sunset on that corner. It's mm -hmm. never been so clear. Yes, yeah. And I, I think that's a good phrase to use because I think sometimes trees also get in our way. Yeah. And now that the trees aren't there, I see the chapel for what it is, a beautiful, beautiful building that represents so much. It's not going to be torn down. It will be repurposed. But we're also practicing, by we, I mean the sisters, good stewardship because it's been many years and we've cycled through many possible developers and worked with the town of West Hartford. And part of our agreement with the developers and with the town was that in renovating our mother house, our chapel, our property, we would provide for those less fortunate. So there will be a number of units that for 20 years will be for low income. And that was part of our deal, if you want, with the town of West Hartford, who was very amenable to that. It's part of who we are as Sisters of St. Joseph to care for those that nobody else will care for. That's why we founded St. Francis and St. Mary's. There were other hospitals, but people, right. everybody wasn't being served in the right way. So we stepped up to the plate, as they say. So I'm hearing three really important things, and, and I want to stress them. The ongoing commitment to the community from the Sisters of St. Yes. Joseph, mm -hmm. really stemming from your vows, that, that word stewardship. Mm -hmm. The fact that you may not have full ownership of the property does not remove your responsibility as stewards to the community to serve those who can't afford good mm -hmm. housing. So, mm -hmm. And I found that that's a large number. It's 30 apartments out yes. of that complex that for the next 20 years will be safeguarded. Mm -hmm. uh, for those with low earning income. Mm -hmm. And they'll have a beautiful property with easy yes. access to restaurants and mm -hmm. import and bus lines and work. And it's a beautiful area in that section of Elmwood and as you're going over there. So that's to be proud of. If you had one word of advice to whether it's physicians or nurses or parents as we approach the school year and are they going to school or is it a blended, are we homeschooling? What has been your success to maintaining the vows? You mentioned you took your vows in the chapel. Yes. Clearly you've been mm -hmm. at it for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes. You know, I've been reflecting on, on some of the things that you've also shared, Tim, about people wanting to go back and wanting a new normal. And there's no going back. One of my favorite scripture passages is from Jeremiah where Jeremiah is told, I have a future filled with hope for you. I know well the plans I have in mind for you. And I used to say to the sisters when we were talking about, you know, changing the mother house and moving and selling and all that good stuff, that God indeed had a future for us, but we had to take the step forward to step into that future and have that trust and faith that what God was promising us was going to be good. Maybe there would be pain with that, but in the end, it would be good. So my advice to parents, physicians, whomever, myself, is to walk into that future knowing that God, whatever faith tradition we happen to be, whether it's the God of the Christian tradition, Yahweh of the Jewish tradition, or whatever spiritual sense someone has, that we have to trust that there's good for us, but it's up to us to move forward into that good. That's why I, I shy away from talking about a new normal. What's normal anymore? So I think that is a perfect place to stop our chat. And I just want everyone to kind of hear that last step. Um, and maybe a good mindful practice mm -hmm. is for any of us who have 
noticed physically something is really different in our world. Mm -hmm. um, is to gently ask that question, what can I see now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? What can I see now? And mm -hmm. step forward. Yes. Step forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for doing this with me today. Thanks for inviting me, Tim.